Hey there, Rick Sage, recording at the Rimrock Studios in Bishop, California. Welcome to Season 2 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, where I speak with retailers, brand managers, athletes, executives, and others in the outdoor biz and share their stories, tips, advice, productivity tricks, and ideas you can use to take your career or business to the next level. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. I've used Audible for many years now. I'm on the road a lot, and Audible allows me to enjoy the great books I discover or are recommended by friends. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the Outdoor Biz Podcast. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Start your 30-day free trial with Audible today. So hey guys, we are in Denver, Colorado on the first Outdoor Biz Live podcast. Very excited to be here with the guys from Wayfinder, a new co-working space in downtown Denver. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for hosting me. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us. This is awesome. We're at a little uh, speakeasy room off of a brewery. Uh, you might hear a dog barking in the background, <laughs> um, but we're, we're out of the space for now because there's doing a bunch of construction. I think in the intro, you may have heard the, um, I think there was a guy drilling some concrete that I recorded, so you may have heard Sounds that in the intro, right. but... Um, yeah, so why don't we start with um, introductions. Let's make sure everybody knows who you guys are. Sure. Uh, my name is Joe Ewing. I am one of the co-founders of Wayfinder um, and the current executive director. Cool. My name is Britton. Uh, I'm also one of the co-founders of the co-working space. Uh, and I also run a, a, a business taking people on cycling trips throughout Central and South America. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Glenna Barron and I work for One Seed Expeditions as the head of operations. Um, and I'm also helping these guys as the director of community on that Wayfinder. <laughs> And Peter Dan- Peter's here. I'm Peter Downing, and I am one of the, and will be one of the dedicated desks at my Wayfinder, and I run a small company uh, called Suffer Better with my partner, Bob. Awesome. So why don't we start with how you guys got into the outdoors? Sure. As kids, as, how'd that all come about? Oh, man. Definitely, uh, for me, it was a lot to do with uh, my family. I had a really active family. Grew up skiing. Grew up on the Front Range of Colorado here, just south of Denver. Um, really started realizing my passion for, for or my trajectory for a career in the outdoor industry um, in high school when I participated in Outward Bound. I actually attended an Outward Bound uh, focused expeditionary learning school. Which oh, wow. Is, uh, it was a cool charter school focused Perfect. on Outward Bound principles. Uh, and then I was an Outward Bound instructor for a number of years where I met Britton. Britton and I worked together in Costa Rica, I guess it's about nine years ago now, which is wow. crazy to think about. <laughs> wow. Uh, so we reconnected wow. when I Yeah. Has it really been nine years? It's wild. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so that, yeah, definitely just kind of taking advantage of the Colorado outdoors, all the fun stuff like whitewater kayaking is my big thing. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. For me, I definitely, I think it, it kind of goes back to just being a crusty nosed kid growing up <laughs> in a rural area where like I just, we just had a ton of space where I grew up. And so I played outside constantly. And I think that just sort of like, it just felt like a natural step to then, you know, slowly get into backpacking trips with buddies yeah. and a lot of, you know, self-supported bike trips. Um, but yeah, like Joe said, a lot of overlap with the whole outward bound thing. Uh, and then that, that kind of, I think is what really kicked off the sort of career path as winding and meandering as it has been. Um, but in the outdoor industry, we're we've all hacked our way. I know it's, it's, it's all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, working as a, as a guide, um, working as an instructor, uh, in more of an like educational capacity, but also leading like client groups on, on trips throughout different parts of Latin America. Um, but yeah, I'd say the core of that is kind of just being in rural parts of Eastern Washington state and playing outside as a kid. Um, and just kind of always being obsessed with like finding out what was, you know, what was around the next bend, so to speak. And so totally. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh-huh. And your story? Yeah. So my, my story is a little bit different. I actually grew up um, just outside of Chicago, so not a ton of access to the outdoors, um, but had a ton of family in Colorado and California. So just grew up um, getting out here and hiking and skiing. Um, yeah. After college, I worked in advertising and tech and knew that that was not for me. Uh, so I moved out to Colorado and um, yeah, just kind of along the way, I 
I knew that I did not want to be sitting in an office all day, every day, and um, just made traveling and the outdoors a uh, priority. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I started with one seat about a year and a half ago um, and have not looked back. Awesome. So what was your first outdoor job? Oh, man. <clears throat> I mean, it was probably one seed. Really? Okay. Yeah. So from tech to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. No, and I, I mean, I grew up doing um, camping trips, like the Overland Adventures mm-hmm. um, for middle school and high schoolers and loved all that. Um, yeah, my mom was a flight attendant, so grew up yeah. flying everywhere and just being thrown in an airplane by yourself as like nice. a, you know, nine-year-old. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I always loved adventure and travel, but yeah. Um, didn't get to make that a priority until my late twenties. And I'm very happy that I did. You did. That's awesome. How yes. about you guys' first traditional outdoor job? Oof. Um, I, I did the camp counselor thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. College. Yeah. Um, and then what was your camp? camp? Did you have an, like an instructor name? <laughs> Yeah. Like counselor name. I had one. I like talked to the, the, the other the other counselors had a name for me, but I don't think. Um, um, they yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna withhold that. <laughs> <laughs> for obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah, we don't want that on tape. Cool. <laughs> Something around along the lines D card or whatever. Show, but yeah, I also uh, did did a bunch of raft guiding as well, so that was okay. a more commercial thing. Yeah, yeah. I for me I would say I mean it's like a slightly more like traditional job in the outdoor industry it was well so when I went to to work with Howard Bound it was initially in the marketing and communications office (laughs) and um I did that for a little over a year and then every time instructors would come back with their their student groups from these fun trips and these awesome adventures it was like the hell am I doing here like (laughs) I need to like. I just knew that that was going to be where I was way more valuable and way more inspired, and so made that transition to then working as um, as an instructor. And that was kind of the beginning of then a number of other organizations and, uh, and jobs that I had. Cool. Yeah. How did the idea for Wayfinder come about? You guys, so, you guys all have been friends for a long time, and just, yeah. So Brendan and I met a long time ago, uh, as well as Chris, and it was all the three of us um, all knew each other. But we all came together, I guess, in April of 2017. Um, but about a year ago, in January, Britain gave me a call. Um, I was living up in Snowmass, Colorado, and Britain called me. I think I was on a chairlift, and he said, uh, "He said, I'm, I'm sitting here with Chris Baker, who's our third co-founder. He runs One Seed." Um, and we had this idea that we want to, you know, we want to bring Desta in, which is my company, um, and bring Desta, Revolution, One Seed, maybe a couple other businesses, and just get a house and a keg, and you know, have some dogs running around and see see how that goes. And then, uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm in. Sounds good. I can't wait to get the hell out of the mountains. I, I miss my family and all this stuff. So, <laughs> I, um, so I got. Yeah, I kept reconnected when we came down to Denver, and it all started because of beer and pizza. Wow, cool. Yeah. And wanting to work together. And wanting yeah. to work together, and then it kind of snowballed from there. Awesome. And, and leading up to that, I – so, like, I I had – when I first moved to Denver, um, was just kind of trying to redesign some things with Revolucion, which is the company that I run. Uh-huh. Um and reached out to a bunch of folks in Denver that were kind of loosely in that world of adventure travel and, and whatnot. Um, <laughs> it was like radio silence. And, <laughs> and then Chris, who was just like an amazing guy, was like, yeah, come by the office. I'll, I'll pour you a beer and you, we can just talk and, and see what connections there are. Yeah. Uh, and so we did, and there was just like an immediate sense that like by being surrounded by someone else who's working on sort of similar things and, and we can share resources and right. best practices. Um, and so at the time he was working out of an office just down on Platt Street. Um, and it was a, this great little studio spot overlooking the river. And that's actually where I met Glenna okay. um, and, and the One Seed team. Yeah. And I was like, look, wherever you guys end up moving, because their their lease was was ending, the price in that area for any office space is out of control. <laughs> and so I was like, I'll take the broom closet, like whatever it <laughs> is. Like I want to be surrounded in. by you guys because it's just, it helps so much. Yeah. And um, 
And then that was like what initially kind of began the conversation, like, well, who else might be interested? And we really did. Like, I remember looking at like Craigslist for like, like a mixed use zoning, sure, yeah, like yeah. house yeah. that we could just move into and Makes everyone could sense. have their own room. And, yeah. um, and then we just started reaching out to a bunch of people in our networks and the response was like pretty overwhelmingly positive that at least for people in that community that, that kind of outdoor inspired right. Makes, dri- yeah. and, and driven world, like there were a ton of small teams or like, you know, solo entrepreneurs yeah. that were like, man, I need to, I feel like I'm flying solo all the time. And so to yeah. be surrounded by similar like-minded people working on, you know, that's got the be latest things because I feel the same way. I'm in my little, you know, hovel there and Bishop doing my podcast. Oh all yeah. Around, you know, us. Yeah. I'm there by myself, you know, yeah, totally be awesome. Being, being around folks. And Peter, what's, how do you, what's your connection to these guys? <laughs> so I met these guys. There's a local organization called Coactive. Mm-hmm. And these guys were at a happy hour we did. It was funny because I only went because my daughter did the food for okay. the for the happy hour. <laughs> so, I didn't she know that. That. so she was like, Peter, Dad, you got to show. So I showed. Yeah. And I met these guys and they were talking about this. But it was a different space at the time. You were looking right. at, I think, a yeah. different location. But... I, uh, our little company, I've been on my own working out of my house and the, the thought of being in a collective communal space with other people passionate about the outdoors just, yeah. just got me. Yeah. So I've been psyched about it since I've met these guys, you know, way back. Well, I don't even, that was, that was right in the you were initial stage. early on when you were just sort of getting the, the ball rolling. And yeah. So it sounded like a great call. So I committed then and I'm yeah, still. Yeah, and I think it's an awesome model because it, there's a lot of conversation about the same thing in Bit the Little Town. I live in Bishop. There's folks, you know, there's a woman who's talking about creating that. She has a retail space and she's going to bust open, not bust open the wall, but take over the space next door and do something similar where people can come in and, you know, they're going to put a climbing wall in the back. You want to get a quick workout, you get a quick workout, you go in that space, do some work. So it's an interesting, interesting model. And you guys have a unique situation in that it's a co-op in addition to co-working space. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So the co-op model is something that um, I, I'm, I'm mildly obsessed with the cooperative business model, as any one of my colleagues can <laughs> Tell you, um, but the co-op model came up when we were trying to figure out how to, you know, make this make this a viable business above and beyond, um, you know, just just having a shared office space. Realizing that no one person in particular wanted to manage all of the, you know, household chores we would have had <laughs> if we just got a house together. So we were just like, oh, maybe this maybe this should be run as an autonomous business. But one that has a business model whereby the members um, have have a financial incentive to help one another out. Mm. So the idea with the cooperative business model in this case is slightly different than that of REI or um, you know Ace Hardware or those types of co-ops, um, where you I mean you basically if you're a if you're a member and you have a an office space whether it's a dedicated desk a floating desk or a private office. Um, you basically have a proportional uh, dividend that's allotted to you at the end of the year based on how much we're generating in net profits. And net profits is basically, we're basically able to, um, you know, cover our bases in terms of operating expenses and rent that we're on our commercial lease, um, renting out the space to the individual members. But then we um, have a number of ancillary things that we do to generate revenue on top of that, which ultimately goes back to the members. Um, Cool. So we want, you know, obviously we want to, we want to cultivate a space that's, you know, help, helps people grow their businesses. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for us as scrappy entrepreneurs, business people, we want to be able to save, save some money, sure. um, make money back at the end of the year. Everybody shares and then the work exactly. and everybody benefits. Exactly. And there's that's a, great. there's this, there's just this amazing sense of ownership that comes. I mean, it's a, it's a little, you have literal ownership. Yeah. You're a part of this. And, um, and how many members do you have of the co-op? Currently, we're right around 25 different companies. So the companies will act as a member. Um, some people are individual, um, you know, solo entrepreneurs who also can access as a member. Yeah. Um, we also have an additional tier of membership that's available to companies that don't necessarily require office space, but still want to be a part of the community. Oh, cool. For example, if businesses are in town for the outdoor retailer trade shows, 
um, and they need a place to you know set up shop while they're in, in town or they want a place to meet with clients or That's reps awesome. or anything like that um, our space is open to that Great. Um, so we have you know uh, ideally this is designed to you know support these small businesses that mm-hmm. are that are trying to trying to scrape by but do what they love and to who do. Who are some day. of the businesses that you have on board out of the twenty five? You wanna dig into that? Yeah. So I mean I'm I'm one of them. I think I think that's actually part of what's kinda of cool and unique is that like you know, obviously the just the way that things are structured, there's an inherent incentive for for collaboration and right. for creative sharing of resources. Um, but yeah, I, I'm like, a, I think in a lot of ways, a perfect example of some of the people that are going to be sharing this space. You know, I, I have the local teams that I work with for all the trips that we operate in Latin America. Um, but it's still basically just me as like the, the main admin person like selling and designing and, you know, doing the, like the classic entrepreneur scenario where you're doing everything all the time. Selling trips, washing the dishes. Yeah, answers. exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and toilet paper rolls. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And so, you know, like, it just feels so much more like, like things have a chance of succeeding yeah. when you're surrounded by that energy and, and people with similar passions. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, Revolution, that's, I mean, that's my company. I'll be there. Um, and we'll link we have, to all you guys' businesses and everything in the show notes. Fantastic. Yeah, great. Um, Peter with Suffer Better, uh-huh. community of endurance athletes. Um, we have a guy named Kelly. Uh, he started a company called Cocapelli Pack Rafts. Oh, yeah. Um, he, it's just, it's, it's pretty impressive. Like, as it on his own has basically figured out how to get these in really, really nice, high quality professional rafts manufactured and distributed worldwide. And it's like, I think it sells to somebody in Bishop. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. 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 They Um, they were, they were really um, fortunate to have their rafts in a, in a really popular documentary where some guys rode their bikes across Mongolia and used that to to go across the river. So uh, Pelly Pack Rafts. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, the the same guy who shot that film, his name's Joey Schusler. He's going to be providing some photography, yeah, like we'll have his, his photos framed and, yeah. and put up cool. in the space. Yeah. So it's all it's all a community. But I mean, a couple others that come to mind. There's a there's a company called Iconic Adventures. Um, who I've actually been con- I've worked for them before. <laughs> um, but they organize a bunch of really really cool and and kind of top notch co- like corporate travel. Yeah. Um, and then Glenna talk about Glenna and One Seed Expeditions. expeditions. Chris, the yeah. the other co founder, he started that. But Glenna works with them. She can talk about that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, head of operations for one seat expeditions. Um, we do adventure travel expeditions all over the world. Um, so the majority are hiking and trekking trips, a couple biking trips. Um, and yeah, we work in seven different countries all over the world. Awesome. Um, and then 10% of all, uh, revenue from your trip goes towards, uh, microfinancing in the oh, country cool. where you just took a trip. Yeah. Um, so we have a big That's focus great. on, yeah, microfinance and, um, investing in entrepreneurs which is all the more exciting. Being, what kind of adventures do you guys do? Yeah, so um, everything from Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania to um, various treks throughout Nepal. So Everspace Camp. Um, we also work in Peru, um, Argentina, Chile, Colombia, and Bhutan. So awesome. that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been great. And um, yeah, the perfect, perfect mix of travel and um, social impact and um, just very fortunate to, to be there and so we, we just were there and we heard the the drills and the saws and everything going on when's when you, when's opening day when's launch day so that the, the, <laughs> that's, that's a really good question uh, <laughs> whenever they get done so we are actually hosting a an outdoor retailer after party um along with some of the some of the um, exhibitors from um from outdoor retailer, going to oh, come cool. down. Carabiner Coffee kind of launch party. All of the we're doing a big raffle, and all the proceeds are going to the Access Fund, which protects climbing awesome. areas around the U.S. if not beyond. Um, so yeah, we're we're sh- this, so this Friday's, this, this, Friday's a, this Friday's a big day. Although we won't be fully open for um, you know 
all, all the offices won't yeah. be quite open yet. And are you guys working out of there now, or are you just you're waiting we, to move we in? We spend we spend twelve to I know you're sixteen hours a day <laughs> doing <laughs> manual labor <laughs> so that we can right. and hammer nails, yeah. and painting, yeah. sanding. And there's there's one conference room and we have Wi-Fi, so oh, go so do some computer work yes, and then go paint yeah. some walls cool. and then yeah. yeah. yeah there go. were thirty of them in that conference room when I first got there. Okay, that was packed. Yeah, we're shooting we're shooting for an official open around the. Ninth um, of February. Awesome. And then, you know, it seems in the outdoor world now, a lot of um, retailers and people are doing events. Events seem to be very popular, right? It's a way to get consumers and customers and just outdoor like-minded folks together. Are you guys going to continue to do events throughout the year, like slideshows? And Absolutely. Yeah. That's one of the biggest speaker. things. I, I mean, obviously, people um, love attending events with like-minded folks yeah. and going to film screenings and stuff like that. But um, another dimension of that is that's one of the ancillary revenue generation generation oh, right. options for uh, for the co-op. So um, we rent the event space out to anyone who wants to rent it, but, but at a ha- half price rate for members. Um, ideally, um, that's a, you know a way to put some put the icing on the cake, sure, I guess, yeah, for, yeah. for the members. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get, I can tell you that uh, for us at Suffer Better, we, we've got events that we want to talk to these guys about. That yeah. we've got some things coming up that we yeah. totally want to do because we traditionally do them at running stores, yeah, right where a lot of the community hangs out. But for us to be able to bring that community to this place is yeah. super cool for us. Yeah, that's and awesome. it fits right in with what we're trying to do. And that so and and I think even beyond the sort of more traditional event idea like there's all sorts of like big picture vision includes ideally like kind of being a a, a place that's a platform as a voice for the industry you're talking about conservation issues the the reason why or is coming to denver this year like let's have conversations about that so hosting panel discussions film screenings that's awesome um and you know, and even beyond that, get the local politicians down there. And yeah, I tell mean, them what a great job they're doing if they are, or what a horrible <laughs> yeah, job exactly. they're doing if they aren't. Exactly. We'll, we'll just ask to them and then restart and start. Yeah, that might be Peter for Congress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what uh, and what kind of nonprofit work do you guys support? So we're still kind of getting into that. Uh, obviously, the outdoor industry really lends to um, you know an inherent need to conserve the natural environment. So being able to support uh, nonprofit organizations like the Access Fund and the, and, the, and like protect our winners, those types of organizations are super important. Um, but, you know, we're, we're still figuring out how to make sure we have the concrete holes in the ground fin- finished <laughs> right, before, right. before we open. But yeah. realistically, once we get up and running and we kind of get down to a well-oiled machine, well-oiled machine, we want to hear from the members. This yeah. is this is a democratic. Is there a nonprofit that's a member? Um, if not there yet. is, I'm really sorry. I'm forgetting. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, maybe not yet. <laughs> right now, yeah. the, not. I, I don't believe so. that. That could be a potential too, right? Someone no, absolutely. Like, oh, yeah. Right absolutely. No, and it's like it's been a big part of the conversation from the from the very beginning as well. Just like how can we make this more than just a co working space? And I think it speaks to the co op model in right. that, like it's it's not. It's not the, the typical setup where a normal co-working space, right. there's an event, and it sort of just feels like another thing that, like, is just getting in the way. Right. Whereas, like, if Peter at Suffer Better hosts an event or or wants to bring people into the space, like me as an, as an, another member of the co-op, I'm going to benefit from that. Yeah, Whether that's directly or indirectly, right. yeah. the people that he's bringing into the, into the co-op might be interested in what I've got going yeah, on absolutely. and vice versa. Absolutely. Um, and I think that, that extends to a lot of the nonprofits that are based here locally as well as nationally. Right. Um, and so Denver being such a huge hub for the outdoor and recreation industry in general, I mean, like, we've we've had a lot of interesting conversations um, with, uh, with Louis, what's Louis, Louis, Benitez, Louis Benitez, yeah, Benitez, yeah. So sorry. you guys are on the cutting, one of the states that's on the cutting edge with now that you have a, you know, a department about the rec. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and it's once recognized the states, by the right government. on the cusp, but to be yeah. connected with Louis. It's huge. Yeah, he's been a, he's been a huge champion for us, which is great. fantastic. He was on the show 
a few episodes back. Yeah. He's, he's a great, great dude. Awesome. He's great. And so what other outdoor activities do you guys participate in yourselves? Everything. Everybody in Colorado does everything. I know, yeah, that's true. I, I may be the one person who doesn't rock climb. <laughs> I don't even I don't. in Colorado. I don't okay, maybe not. So I, not I, prefer, I prefer to roll with gravity. Um, <laughs> I'll but, with you. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah. you know, yeah. both my feet the ground skin. at the same time something went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm For me, I mean, I, I, I definitely fell in love with mountain biking when I lived in Costa Rica. But then I moved it to Colorado and was like, oh, yeah. this is this is out of control. Real. Like the yeah. ac- the access and the number of countless miles, right. single. Tr- I mean, there's just access to so many different places. Um, I never really, I guess, it took about a year of living here to fully understand. I think the the, the like depth of what's available here in Colorado. That's one year you've been here. You rode the Colorado Trail. You've done, yeah, he's done just about uh, every badass ride awesome. you could do in the state. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I just I've tried to take advantage of it. And I think as soon as you just sort of hurl yourself at what's available here, you really understand why there's so many people who are just head over heels in love with the mountains and and the rivers and everything that it has to offer. And so, don't you mean, Glenna? How about you? I yeah. I mean, I keep it pretty simple. Uh, hiking in the summertime, like every weekend, and then uh, skiing in the wintertime. Um, and then yeah, I love to swim. You know, swim. <laughs> At the gym, but then go up to Grand Lake in the summers. Cool. Um, so yeah, just getting outside. And she's gonna be a fly fisher person. And so I, mean, I want to get into yeah. fly fishing next uh, summer. That's a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. that's next yeah. goal. Yeah. 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 yeah, And so maybe I'll change this. Typically, do you have any advice or suggestions for people wanting to get into the outdoor biz? And then maybe also. Now that you've gone under the, the task of starting this bit, this co-op thing, maybe you have some advice for someone in sure. Bishop or Jackson Hole or some of the other stuff like that. Yeah. Start something like this. Sure, I can you know start that conversation. I think everyone has gonna have input on this one. Um, but in terms of you know starting a business in the outdoor industry community is a huge aspect part of that and all of us realize that as entrepreneurs in that space realizing how valuable or invaluable really um, it is to be connected with people who've gone through the same challenges who have um, you know figured out the answer to this question that you can't you know it's it's just yeah it's yeah it's just uh it's, it's a really community driven thing but it's also a massive industry i mean everybody loves that 887 billion dollar number but the vast majority of the businesses in this space aren't making billions of dollars they're making significantly tens less than dollars. that but they tend to <laughs> yeah i have hundreds of dollars in yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's really it's really all about um you know helping each other out and and Personally, I would say if you're in Colorado, come you know, come hang out with us. Come, but but if, if you're, you're out, in Colorado, if you're elsewhere, out. check it out. If you're yeah. elsewhere, like just just tap into the community. Don't separate yeah. yourself from yeah. all the other businesses. There's something amazing that happens in the outdoor industry specifically. That even if you're in a pseudo competitive space or like competing with another business, like Britain yeah. re- with Revolution, it's pretty it's pretty astounding that Britain and Chris Baker connected in the first place because Chris could have just been like, no, you're a competition. Right. Yeah. But it's never that way. That's the beauty of this whole industry and it's always been that way. It's one big giant tribe and we can compete day to day in the retail shops and, and for each other's business but at the end of the day we can sit around and have a beer and have yep. dinner yeah, exactly and talk right. about and that's beautiful. Sure. It's awesome. Yeah. And we and we really, you know, we really want to cultivate that Yeah, no, that's place. Great. You know, that's yes. great. Yeah, so I think that's a huge thing. Yeah. In terms of breaking into it, I mean, I, I, as I said, I don't have a huge outdoor background, but um, yeah, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. I I had the transferable skills, uh-huh. as I said in interviews, um, to, yeah, you know, get a job with one seat and yeah, yeah. Um, do what I really love doing. I knew that I didn't want to be at an ad agency or at a tech startup and um, all great experiences and it got me to where I am now but um, yeah don't be afraid to try something different and go to you know different networking events and things you wouldn't expect and um, yeah the opportunities are out there and the people will see the value also yeah. you know you don't have to have been a, a Knowles instructor to right. Right. Um, get the perfect dream outdoor job um, well, I think as our industry continues to grow up in brands and people that have been in for a while and recognize 
that we need a little bit of cross pollination and folks from the tech industry or from the you know an engineer or I mean obviously they do that in the product side of the world but we need people from these other industries they bring a whole another level of skill and, and tools to the to the trade so it helps without question and one of the one of the cool things about this community is we've you know people that just participate in outdoor activities or like to go hiking on the weekends with their friends yeah. like you end up doing these sorts of activities together and inevitably something, some cool conversation is going to come up. Like, yeah. I mean, we all, Britt and Chris and I, we sort of, I mean, Britt and Chris's companies are really similar, but we just, we're just like-minded people and we wanted to be around each other. Yeah. You know, it's just, just spend some time in the outdoors, get, get inspired to do something awesome. And, you know, I think a big drive for us is being around people that not only are going to help our respective businesses grow, but people that we can, you know, tap on the shoulder and say, Hey, it's a powder day. We should probably <laughs> leave and go, go do yeah, some, we need to call in well today. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I think we, that, we, that happens to Bishop a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, sure. That's 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I was just going to say, I think like one of the cool things about, and like, I don't know, I feel like it's also worth prefacing by saying, like, I, I don't have all the answers. Like, I'm still trying to figure this out. Like, <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm yeah, doing on most days. Yeah. But we're all making stuff up. <laughs> but like having, you know, having spent time and committed energy to like trying to find my place, I, th- I think it's worth noting that, and it's not like it's totally unique to the outdoor industry, but there's a spectrum. You don't have to be, you know, like Glenn was saying, a Knowles instructor right. to like find your place, right. you know, at the climbing gym or whatever. There's an entire spectrum, whether that's like just curious about what it even means to go backpacking or right. whatever, right. Um, to becoming like, you know, a full on certified guide or instructor. Like right. you can find whatever level you're at. And I think that's pretty cool. And so I think a lot of people will, will make an attempt and either feel maybe intimidated or feel like, you know, the people they're surrounded by aren't up to their level perhaps even. Um, but I mean, especially here in, in Colorado and in Denver, you can find any level of whatever outdoor activity. Uh, and I think that, you know, there's a, there's an app, there's definitely a culture here for it. And I think you're right. Even if you're not, you know, a badass climber or not, you don't know, exactly, but you have a, a marketing, skill set or a tech skill set totally else, don't be afraid to come come and join the tribe yeah we need you yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. Some yeah. yeah 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 that's great and i think and another thing is with, oh sorry well just i just like that denver like as a as someone that's one of the many transplants um <laughs> i've been here for like two years now and i think I, I, I meet a ton of people from all over the country and it's 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 fun. There's this fun energy in Denver because people are here because they want to be here. You don't go to like, you know, there are a lot of other cities where you meet people like, God, I want to get the hell out of this place. It's a shithole. You come to Denver. It's like, I moved here because I totally decided I intentionally made a decision to be here. Probably per Um, capita. Denver has more folks. I would, would, yeah, yeah, Seattle might get more run for the money. I think people move here because of that. I I know Peter and I are, you know, been here a long time, but I, I mean, the way I see it with Denver, I mean, a lot of people get kind of weirded out about people migrating here. And But my biggest thing is Denver was a little too redneck for me when I was a kid, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. And I'm really glad it's yeah. evolved oh, to it's where totally it's at. grown up. Denver, Denver, yeah, it's grown up. Denver is a yeah. great progressive city with tons of outdoor people and yeah. innovative minds. And it's yeah. it's fantastic. It's I love it. Yeah. The energy is really, really great right better, too. Yeah, the food is definitely <laughs> The food and bars. Yeah, no more steak and, and breweries, potatoes. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys have any daily routines you use to keep your sanity through all this? You meditate, do yoga, you and the dog? Paps Blue Ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> yoga and Paps, that's a t-shirt right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Uh, run, I don't know. I'm, yeah. Run, 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 yeah. Yeah. Clear the sand for a run. Yeah. That's for me, it's, it's a it's a bike ride. It's like the exact same sort of thing, but on a bike, and it definitely resets things. But yeah, um, yeah, that more than anything. But mm-hmm. the late, I mean, lately it's been like there's been so I'm many sure been. so many late nights getting the, yeah. the space ready. I'm sure, yeah. um, I, it's I just hanging out and drinking beer. And, and but that's the best part about it. I mean, we could stay at the space <laughs> sweeping and painting until two in the morning, but we have that camaraderie. That's like 
that's completely invaluable. Yeah. We, we get, yeah. we can support each other yeah. and that's the best part of, about all this. It, I mean, if any one of us individually were doing this alone, we would have given up a long time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Bennett, anything? Yeah. Man. Um, no, I mean, ditto to everything that they said. And then, yeah, swimming, yeah. Oh, wine. Yeah, that's a good one, yeah. Swimming, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yoga and Pabst. Swimming and wine. Hey, there you sure. go. No, I'm going to stop I'm adding the PBR into my routine. Yeah. Yeah. You guys know the secrets. Yeah, yeah I just know. You heard it here now first. I got it. <laughs> what about some of your favorite books that you read or give as gifts or have inspired you over the years? I get geeked out on entrepreneurship books, so not not so much like the outdoor stuff. Um, yeah, that's I mean, perfect. Yeah. Uh, the the typical Into the Wild, and, mm-hmm. you know, the John Krakauer series and everything. Yeah, but one of the books I read recently that was super inspiring to me was a book called Leaders Eat Last. The uh, Simon Sinek book. Yeah, yeah. He's both his books are awesome. And you know, it's it's really sort of realizing like we're all on our own specific journeys and some people and you know we there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of businesses that you could work for that are total slave drivers and don't realize that each and every single person that works for you has their own set of emotions and has their own needs and this sort of thing. Like it's it's so important to recognize those things um, and to realize like hey yeah, for my own sanity, I need to go on a bike ride or I need to go out and I need to have a PBR. And I think the community that we're, you know, collectively building together, um, really builds, you know, creates that. Like, yeah. They consider that as part of it. Exactly. Yeah. We, we all genuinely care about each yeah. other. And then you add the, and then another dimension that I actually can benefit for help from helping you out financially, but it's not, yeah. but that's not really why I do it. Yeah. I do it because you're kicking your, you're kicking your own ass doing this job and you don't have to do it alone. We can all help each other out. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Anything else? I, uh, yeah, I just finished um, the Let My People Go Surfing. Oh, great. Another good one. Yeah. Um, no, it's an awesome book. I love the way he breaks it down. Everything from, um, like, the people, human mm-hmm. resources, to um, financial philosophy. Um, so really enjoyed that. And then currently reading uh, Nelson Mandela's autobiography. Oh, so nice. going to South Africa in April. Oh, so cool. yeah, perfect. part research, yeah. part, I like it. he was a great leader. Yeah. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. How about your favorite piece of outdoor gear under a hundred dollars? <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, almost all of my gears actually end up. <laughs> I just don't have money for it. So everything I buy is secondhand or a thrift store. People who wear Patagonia stuff don't actually do things in the outdoors. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ah, ah, uh, under a hundred bucks? That's a good question. <laughs> Headlamp. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. It's, it's money well spent. Yeah, in my book. Yeah, I agree. I have. Um, I've gone through a lot of kayak paddles in my life, mm. uh, whitewater kayak paddles, and the one that I've had since I was 17 is the only one that's never broken. And that, wow. and that thing I bought at a, a just a consignment store for wow. 50 oh, bucks. That says a lot. Interesting. Bomber. Yeah, that's cool. OG Warner, Warner people, if you're listening, build them like <laughs> build them like you used to. <laughs> <laughs> you used to. <laughs> exactly. I yeah, there you go. Oh, sorry. I got I two years ago. I did a big like like trans South America bike trip. And I, I scored a sweet deal on a Brooks, like classic B 17 saddle. Okay. Um, it was like 50 bucks or something like that. It was brand new. Um, hands down. Like I've just, I've ridden the hell out of that right. thing and it's still yeah. my favorite That's a good bike one. saddle to ride. Cool. A really solid camping chair yeah, that you can idea. keep yeah. in the back of your car, but also take camping. Yeah. Perfect. I like it. That's yeah. good. 20 bucks. Twenty Walmart. bucks, there yeah. You, <laughs> you could have bought five. Yeah. I know, I should yeah. have. You got a hundred bucks. It stays in the back of my car right. all year long. Yeah, you have a whole set of furniture. Yeah, right. <laughs> we can all be there. Come on. So, as we wrap up here, anything else you'd like to? Say to the audience or ask of the audience, definitely should come and stop by if you're in Denver. Please do. We'll pour your beer. Um, Wayfinder is a community place. It's not It's not just for people who work in jobs in the outdoor industry. It's a place for people who are inspired by the outdoors to do what, you know, do what they love to do. If they need, if they work a corporate job and they have a remote job and they just every once in a while need to get out and get, you know, refreshed and recharged by the outdoors, we want, we want you a part of that community just as much. 
much. So, yeah, like Rick was saying, we need you know we this 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 industry is is booming, and we want you know, and everyone is really passionate about what they do. But there's a lot of people that you know don't necessarily want to take that step into the outdoor industry, but we encourage you to, even if it's just on an advisory basis, but come, yeah, have come a on down and check it out and yeah. talk to us. Yeah, exactly. That's mm-hmm. great. Awesome. What else? I would, I mean, just as like parting words, I don't like, it sounds cliche, but I think especially in the last, like the last couple weeks, seeing all this come together, um, the simple concept of like, make sure that you're doing something you give a damn about, like mm-hmm. that you're excited about, like the world yeah. needs more people that are yeah. jazzed about their daily life. Um, and it's a, it's sometimes a hard decision to make and I totally understand that. But, um, yeah, if, if your routine is killing you, like fucking do something different, you know, mm-hmm. change that. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll, you'll find people, you'll find the support that you need to, to make that transition, but, um, just do it, you That's know, right. Perfect. That's right. Good. I- Ditto. <laughs> yeah. Very well said. They, so, yeah. If anybody wants to reach out to you guys, how can they catch you up with you on email? Like, yeah, email is probably the best way. Um, you can reach us. Uh, you can check us out on Wayfinder hyphen co op. That's Wayfinder hyphen C O O P dot com. Okay. Or info at Wayfinder hyphen co op dot com. You can reach us directly and. Cool. Happy to answer questions. We also feel free to just stop by. There's yeah. there's, a, there's a coffee shop um, going to be in there, operated by Carabiner Coffee. Great. Uh, we're really excited about that. They have one of their old vans in there, and that's oh, going to cool. be the centerpiece of the whole whole cafe. Come ca- grab a cup of coffee with us. I'll pour you a beer. Um, don't don't be shy. Yeah. We're at five twenty five. Five twenty five Santa Fe. Five two five. Five two five. Yeah. yeah. We'll put links all that in the show notes. Well, thanks, guys. This is be great. This is the yeah. first our pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. After biz live. Super fun. Thank you. Appreciate it. Congratulations on what you're doing. It's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks, Rick. Right. Thanks. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Peter, good job. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you kind of didn't mean to leave you out there. Hey, I belong on the outside. <laughs> no. All right. Thanks. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. Be sure and go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com where you'll find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Thanks for listening, and until next time, be sure and make time to get outside.